we are now at a point where you can see the changes in climate with your own eyes. This is perhaps more convincing than reading any bits of science that you can access. Corinne Le Corre, thank you very much for taking time to meet with us. You've published more than 100 papers on, on carbon emissions, and you even coined the phrase carbon budget. Can you tell us what happened when the pandemic started? Yeah, I mean, this was the most incredible experience uh, for, for me, uh, the pandemic, because uh, already uh, like in February, when uh, China went under confinement, people wanted to know what was going on in pollution, in carbon emissions. And as a carbon expert myself, I should have known the answer. We uh, then sat back and uh, thought, well, we need to devise a new method. And that's exactly what we did. And, and how big was this drop that you saw then? Uh, the drop uh, worldwide at the peak of the confinement was 17% on a daily basis compared to an average day the year before. But not all countries were confined at the same time. Uh, but at the peak of confinement, we had all of US, most of Europe, Japan, part of Russia, some of Brazil. So we had really a dynamics of, of many, many countries coming to a halt together. And that's when we saw this really big uh, uh, drop in emissions. Had you ever seen anything like that, that sudden drop in emissions before? Yeah. As far as we could tell, this had never happened so suddenly. Uh, there were the last big drop uh, for at, a, at an annual level that happened at that scale was during World War II. Were they decreasing at a pace fast enough to uh, reach the 1.5 threshold? This is the kind of decrease that we would need to limit climate change to one and a half degree. But obviously the decrease during the pandemic was unbearable. I mean, this is not the way to tackle climate change. And they haven't actually changed very much because as soon as the confinement ended, the emissions are already creeping back up. And this is because there has been no structural changes in the pandemic. We have the same roads, the same cars, the same industry. So all these things which are responsible for our emissions in the long term haven't changed. So the pandemic itself hasn't done much at all to tackle climate change, if anything. Of all the CO2 that we emit, less than half stay in the atmosphere and causes climate change. And the bigger fraction, 55% on average, is in fact sucked up, absorbed by the natural reservoirs, the land and the ocean. And these natural reservoirs, which we call carbon sinks, are slowing enormously climate change. One of the biggest sink is, is, is vegetation, is forests. Um, if you increase CO2 in the atmosphere, forests grow more, it's like vitamin. But there are limits to this uh, because at some point it becomes, uh, it runs out of water or runs out of other nutrients. So this carbon sink weakens the higher the level of CO2. Um, all right, so that's then uh, the carbon sinks on land. What happens in the ocean? In the ocean, the picture is quite different. CO2 just dissolves in the ocean so that the ocean is a vast store of carbon, 50 times more carbon in the ocean than in the atmosphere. And eventually the fate of CO2 will be to end up uh, much of it in the ocean, but that's a very slow process. However, uh, as you warm the ocean, the dissolution of this gas, it becomes less. So the uh, CO2 that we put in the atmosphere stays a long time. It gets absorbed by these carbon sink, but it stays 100 year on average. And that's why it is so important to tackle carbon dioxide when trying to tackle climate change, because it's, it, it, as soon as we put emissions in the atmosphere, there's, there's, there's a long tail to what we're doing. And, and how long does it take from uh, when it leaves the chimney uh, until it starts heating the atmosphere, do you know that? Straight well? away. Because uh, warming is over one degree now, is uh, around 1.1 degree 
of, of warming so far, we have very little budget left. Uh, and the level, it's, it's approximately 10 to 12 years at, uh, at emissions level for 2019 until we've uh, exhausted the budget for limiting climate change to one and a half degree. But there's no doubt that the action needs to be really super uh, rapid. Is it even possible? Uh, yeah, yes, it is possible. I mean, it's possible if we start now. Of course, if the emissions start to drop uh, and they drop rapidly, then we can spread this carbon budget later. So it's not a question of, is it possible to do that? It's a question of, we give it all we have and we limit climate change at the lowest possible level because that's the lowest possible risk. What is the something that brings you hope, that mm -hmm. makes you think that, yes, we will actually do this? What is arising as an opportunity, uh, in a way, is what we do to get out of the pandemic. So the economic stimulus that we're putting in place now across the world, the way that these economic stimulus are oriented could make a massive difference in helping to tackle climate change. And in, if we invest this in, in the infrastructure of tomorrow.